Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me so much pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of India Habitat Center and Professor Benoit K. Behel. The Paintings of India series by Benoit K. Behel is the first major work which connects the tradition of painting in India from the time of Ajanta to the 20th century. The films show many sites of painting which have never been clearly photographed before. The governments of many countries have very kindly cooperated to make this comprehensive project possible. Museums around the world and in India have cooperated immensely for the widespread shooting of these films. Concepts of the development of Indian painting have been altered by the massive and first of its kind coverage of this project. This series of films presents the tradition of Indian painting from a deep understanding of the fountainhead of Indian art flowing from Ajanta and other sites of classic murals. The maker of today's film, Benoit K. Behel, is a renowned art historian and photographer. He is a respected speaker at a breathtakingly long list of prestigious universities and museums around the world. He is an eminent Buddhist scholar and a record setting traveler. He is the author of some of the best selling books on Indian art history in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Benoit K. Behel speaks to us today on his film on Kangra miniature paintings, Poetry of the Hills. Over to Benoit K. Behel. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sujata Chatterjee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My many thanks to uh, India Habitat Center for this yet again, one more occasion to share a beautiful chapter out of the cultural history of this wonderful subcontinent. My many thanks to uh, Doordarshan who have over, the, over long years sponsored the making of my films on deeply researched subjects of art history. And indeed, in this uh, world which is so uh, driven by commerce, it is marvelous that this public service broadcaster uh, took the initiative and uh, backed and sponsored uh, a whole range of work which I suggested from time to time. Thank you so much to them. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Indian philosophy of aesthetics, it is believed that uh, our response to aesthetics, our aesthetic experience is akin, it is similar to Brahmananda itself or the place of salvation itself. For in that moment, when we look upon something truly beautiful, whether it is in nature or in art, our response lifts the veils of illusion which uh, of the material world. And what we are seeing instead is the grace which underlies all that there is. And therefore art has been exceedingly important in the Indian tradition. The paintings of Kangra, which you're going to see today are among the most exquisite expressions of this philosophy in art. They are paintings which are exquisite. They are paintings which lift you out of your uh, the web of your material world and material desires to another realm, a realm in which indeed you see the grace which underlies all that there is. Now, in the uh, medieval period in India, the uh, path of bhakti became well established. It is a path where the uh, viewer, where the worshiper chooses to lose his material concerns, to lose his preoccupations with the material world 
while he is completely absorbed, while he is lost in devotion to the divine. It is an absolutely marvelous concept of loving the divine, pure love of the divine, and in the process, losing all of one's material concerns. And again, these uh, paintings which you're going to see today are a marvelous example of that. The combination of pure aesthetics and bhakti of the losing of the self in adoration of the divine. By the grace that there is, this uh, series was made possible and uh, became a wonderful uh, project because of the immense cooperation of so many people. As you will see in this uh, film also, museums all over the world and across India cooperated immensely in the making of uh, these films. In fact, uh, the way in which the museums cooperated. I remember at the uh, British Library, Jerry Losty very kindly worked uh, from seven o'clock in the morning to allow us access to the paintings, to be able to shoot in the limited frame of time that we had. For we were traveling in 14 countries to scores of the important museums, all trying to cover, and we indeed were very, very fortunate to cover the selected masterpieces of Indian paintings in uh, so many places. As I mentioned, Jerry Losty, uh, Karen Smith at the San Diego Museum of Art uh, worked on Saturday and Sunday and early in the morning just to make this exercise uh, possible and uh, to give us so much time to be able to go through all the reserve collections. It was, of course, wonderful to be able to go through all the reserve collections of so many museums. The paintings we're going to see today, some of them are from the uh, Rietberg Museum in Zurich. Some of them are from the Harvard University Museums. Some of them are from the Victoria and Albert Museum and so many places from the National Museum of India from the museum at Kangra itself. And it's been a wonderful experience and I'm so happy that uh, we have this archive in this film and in the other films of the Painting of India series where we are able to see and therefore to understand these beautiful traditions of painting. I will come back to you and speak more after the screening of this film. Uh, with that, I request uh, Sushant to please uh, run the film. Thank you so much. Art is the reshaping of reality by man to present it in an understandable way. As the artist recreates the world around him, it is shaped by how he sees it and what he believes in. The Indian artist did not attempt to depict only the material reality around him. He wished to share the complete experience of the moment, not just the photographic presentation of the shapes around him. Beauty for the Indian artist has been a reflection of the glory of God. In fact, for the ancient artist, the experience of beauty, the ecstasy on seeing nature or art which is truly beautiful, has been considered as akin to Brahmanand or the final bliss. Join us on this journey into the heart of the Indian tradition of painting. Come with us to the gorge of the Vaghora River where Ajanta was created to the courts of the Mughals and the Deccani Sultans. Journey with us through the deserts of Rajasthan and the icy lands of Ladakh and Lahore Spiti. In the verdant south and in the gentle hills of the north, experience the compassionate view of life that is enshrined in Indian painting.
From the 11th century onwards in India, there was a great revival of Vaishnavism. With it came the Bhakti cult, which was the doctrine of a deep and personal love of the Divine. Where the soul of man was seen to be yearning always for the Lord who created him, for the tenderness and ecstasy of being united with him. The poet saints of the Bhakti movement wrote beautiful verses about the legendary lives and the love of Krishna and Radha, of Ram and Sita, and of Shiv and Parvati. The love of the divine figures for each other became the ideal of the people. Images of their divine love were used by poets and painters to portray their own love for the Creator. The Bhakti movement led to the making of beautiful miniature paintings in Rajasthan. These paintings followed earlier traditions and had simple and bold compositions. They had an energy and vitality which was complemented by a palette of vibrant colours. After the 16th century, the Rajput chieftains and painters were deeply influenced by the art of the Mughal court. Their paintings acquired the refinement and grace which was developed in the imperial ateliers. The Rajputs travelled to the hills of present-day Himachal Pradesh and in this beautiful sanctuary there blossomed many exquisite schools of painting. Along with refinement and technical skills, the hill painters brought to their works a gentleness and humanity which was unmatched. These paintings are simple and direct expressions with a pulsating life and a natural warmth. In the paintings of Garbal and Guler, there is a delicacy and a deep sense of spiritual grace. These styles led to and flowered in one of the greatest styles of miniature paintings in all of India, the Kangra school. Kangra is a small hill state tucked away in the bosom of the green hills of Himachal Pradesh, far from the clamour of the plains. Since Sarchand, who came to the throne in 1775, was the first great patron of painting in Kangra. His ateliers attracted many painters from nearby Guler, who brought with them a refined, and delicate manner of painting. Here in Kangra, we see the development of the finest expressions in art. A great confluence took place. The burnished delicacy of the Mughal idiom met the deep spirituality of the land. With the refinement and technical skills in their hands, the spirit of the warm and simple hill painters took wings. They created a large body of paintings which are among the finest made by man. These paintings bring to us the gentlest and most tender thoughts. They enshrine a deep love for all of creation in a manner which is intensely personal and deeply devoted. Here we see Sant Sarchand celebrating Janmashtmi, the festival of the birth of Lord Krishna. The world of Kangra paintings is one of tenderness and love.
It is the spirit of bhakti, the ecstatic joy of adoration, the supreme joy of the giving of oneself in the love of God, which pervades the entire world of these paintings. There is a tenderness to the touch of the painter and a sense of joyousness that is rarely to be seen in the entire realm of art. The Bhagavat Puran consists of 18,000 verses which were composed in the 10th century in praise of Lord Vishnu and his manifestation upon this earth in the form of Lord Krishna. These verses describe the life, the adventures and the miraculous deeds of Krishna from the time of his birth. The scenes of Krishna's childhood exploits are particularly endearing and evoke the tender sentiments of the worshippers. Here we see beautiful paintings on the exquisite theme of baby Krishna. The Lord is a mischievous child, with his playful antics giving no end of trouble to his mother. The humanity of these themes, of the interaction between a mother and a naughty and irrepressible child, touch the heart immediately. These simple paintings in their rustic settings are among the most endearing. These paintings speak directly to people uh, across cultures and across time because they deal with such fundamentally human subjects. Uh, the love of parents for children, the love of a child for a mother, watching um, Yashoda look into Krishna's mouth and accuse him of eating mud and instead finding there the entire universe. I think uh, everyone is caught in that spell uh, who sees these pictures. These images of the Lord as a toddler and his naughty pranks, the little blue boy stealing butter with his friends, getting caught, being scolded by his mother and pretending to be sorry. These images win the heart completely. In the 11th century, the poet Jaydev wrote the Geet Govind which brings to us the most lyrical images of the love of Radha and Krishna. The exquisite verses bring to life the emotions of the divine lovers in scenes of their separation, longing and joyous reunion. The poetic themes of love are painted with great tenderness by the Kangra artist. She looks at him, and yet she also looks beyond. The whole of creation is in her eyes. The tenderness with which Krishna looks at her reminds us that it is not only the soul which yearns to be reunited with the Lord, the Lord waits with as much longing for the soul to come back to him. These are images of intense love. The tenderness in these paintings transcends all barriers and lifts us to another plane where there is complete caring and harmony. The Lord lovingly places an anklet on Radha's foot. He paints her feet as she looks on shyly. Radha and Krishna, in their love of each other, exchange their clothes. The mischievous Lord hides the clothes of Radha's companions, the gopis, as they bathe in the river. The gopis shyly and modestly try to cover themselves as the Lord looks on playfully. The human souls lost in love for the Lord 
find every opportunity to be close to him. The Lord cajoles Radha as she turns away in annoyance. In these paintings, all of nature responds to the emotions of the divine lovers. The very trees and the flowers seem to tenderly reach out to touch and caress the painted figures. These paintings appear to be filled with a sense of adoration for the world of creation. Every blossoming bough, every bird, the grassy banks are all filled with the joy and the beauty of creation. The cows adore the Lord and wish to be with him. They surround Krishna with the look of utmost devotion. As in the paintings of Krishna, the eternal story of the Ramayana is presented in the Kangra paintings with a delicate and human touch. We share the pain of Ram when his beloved Sita is taken away from him. We see Sita in a distant land pining for her Lord. The paintings of Kangra bring these religious subjects tenderly close to us. The feelings that come from a direct gaze on an Indian painting can sweep away the uh, rational structures that one has for appreciating the uh, kind of cosmic dimensions of landscape, the uh, macrocosmic uh, understanding. And you get there through the detail in Indian painting and through the uh, immediate experience that allows you to go through doors. Uh, and I find, I think it makes Indian painting that much more accessible to more people. Um, it's really a painting of, of smiles and tears and blood and, and uh, human experience that is left there for you to feel um, as much as you can then from that uh, leap to the understandings and the, the broad philosophical concepts that these experiences are embedded in, in Indian philosophy and religious thought. The all-powerful Lord Shiv appears in these paintings as a fond and loving family man. We feel an intimate closeness with the gods in these paintings as they are imbued with emotions we can relate to deeply. Who created these exquisite renderings of love and devotion? Surely, it had to have been the hand of the Almighty guiding the hand of the artist. And it was. The people who painted these paintings were not merely artists with the highest skill, but also intensely devoted human beings who considered every work of theirs to be an offering to the Almighty. Pahari paintings transport you to an enchanted place where you feel an affinity with all creation. The grass is soft and dewy under your feet and the fragrance of the forest hangs thick in the air. There is a coolness that indicates that the monsoons are near. The strains of the sweetest music fill the air and then suddenly you chance upon Krishna. Nothing could ever be more divine and touch your soul more than the sight of the Lord himself. After many centuries, the paintings of Kangra take us back to the sense of the world created by the paintings of Ajanta. 
Here again, there is a full and empathetic response to all of creation. This again is the work of painters who see the harmony of existence and the tender relationship between the flowers, the trees, the animals and the people in this world. These paintings present us a joyous world. It is the joy of surrender, of the tender blossoming of the flower, the caress of the rich grass on the banks of streams, the melodious call of the birds, the peals of laughter contained in the boughs of the trees full of flowers. These are the simple delights of life in the world which the Kangra painter shares with us. As uh, said in the film, the ancient Indian artist does not attempt to present us photographic reality. His purpose is instead to present us the essence of the moment, the feelings of the moment, the meaning of the moment. And he does it so exquisitely. Now just see that painting showing uh, baby Krishna pretending to be sorry. And it is so beautifully done that we know very clearly that he is not sorry. But he is only pretending to be sorry. It's amazing that uh, such nuances of details, such nuances of expressions, such nuances of the moment are put across so effectively and shared with us by the Indian artist. Now, in the uh, ancient philosophy of India, it is very important to remember that there are no gods. There are deities. And these deities are personifications of concepts and the qualities within us. Qualities like grace, qualities like wisdom, qualities like compassion, qualities like vigor and energy, which we use in the pursuit of uh, the truth. And uh, these uh, deities 
are represented before us in art. We look upon the deities. We are moved by their beauty and their grace in order to revive those qualities within us. As we respond to them, the qualities revive within us and they, they grow within us until eventually we would become the deity. In one of the most remarkable personifications of Indian uh, philosophy and Indian art is the personification of Krishna, the word coming from the same root as uh, Akarshan, Krishna, who is the personification of the quality of Akarshan, attraction which is within us. And it is indeed remarkable that even the feelings that we have of attraction towards each other, towards others in the world, even these are used in a seamless path by Indian philosophy to take us and to lead us to realize that all that there is is divine. Even our attraction is divine and finally it should be and is for the divine. So instead of our akarshan being uh, lost in pursuits of uh, much lesser pursuits, we are guided so exquisitely, we are guided so beautifully in devotion to search for the beauty of the divine. And it is indeed remarkable. And therefore we have the wonderful deity of Krishna. And since the, some of the most uh, poignant, some of the most beautiful, some of the sweetest of our attractions is for our children, Krishna is presented before us also as baby Krishna. In fact, uh, some of the finest art that there is, including the paintings that you saw today, some of the most moving, some of the most tender, some of the most evocative of these paintings are about baby Krishna. And who cannot help but be completely moved when they see the, when they see the exquisite expressions and exquisite pranks of baby Krishna. Our hearts are moved and we are uh, brought, with all our emotions we are brought to the realization and the importance of the divine. So indeed, it should be noted that, uh, that uh, <clears throat> Indian philosophy is uh, remarkable in using the entire range of uh, emotions to help us <clears throat> to recognize the divinity in everything that there is. And uh, my many thanks also to uh, Sujata Chatterjee, who stands next to me in helps me in all that I do, in all that I'm doing today, in all that I've done for years. My grateful thanks to her. And uh, I will be very happy at this point to answer some questions if you have any. Thank you so much. Please, uh, Sujata, please read, read out any questions which there may be in the chat box. No questions as yet, but some comments. So I'll read them. So maybe we'll, we read the comments. Some questions will come. Dipankar Mukhopadhyay, what an exquisite experience. Started my day at 6.30 a.m. Saturday in Chicago. It is a divine experience. Guru Pranam. Thank you so much. It is so kind of you to say what you do. Thank you so much. Mita. Highly inspired by your films, Benoit. I'm so glad. I'm glad that uh, the art of uh, so many exquisite artists is being able to reach you uh, through my humble efforts. Thank you. Rajendrani Banerjee, most favorite topic, highly inspired. I'm so glad that you enjoyed this. There's a question now by Lalita D'Souza. Where are most of the originals held? At home, in India, or elsewhere? Uh, the originals, Dalita, uh, are uh, spread, are spread uh, uh, some in uh, private collections, 
but mainly in uh, large museums. And uh, in India, uh, among the uh, out, out of the best of Kangana paintings, in India, some are in the National Museum. A few are in the museum at uh, State Museum at Kangra itself. And uh, highly selected uh, masterpieces are available at the Rietberg Museum in Zurich, at the Harvard University Museums, and at uh, so many uh, uh, major museums around the world. So in fact, uh, I suppose that's what makes these uh, films uh, or give some importance to these films because we have traveled to all these museums and been very, very selective in bringing together the finest of the masterpieces to give you an idea of, uh, of the best of uh, these paintings. Thank you. On what medium were these painted? Fabric, wood, or metal? These that you see have been painted on uh, paper in this period. Before that was a period when uh, these paintings were being made uh, on uh, manuscripts of uh, on uh, dried uh, uh, palm leaves. But by the, by the time that these, uh, which you saw in today's film, by the time these came about, they were all painted on paper. Thank you. Reva Dayan, are names of artists ever mentioned? Uh, yes, uh, by this uh, late period in Indian art, because for Indian art, this is a late period. In fact, what makes the paintings of Kangra remarkable are the fact that even till this uh, late date, they still retain the absolutely superlative uh, quality of Indian art. On the whole, as you would be aware, we begin with the highest quality in a very ancient times. And there is a steady decline uh, over the uh, centuries. Uh, quite remarkable as the human being has become more and more organized and more and more uh, uh, successful in uh, worldly pursuits. This exquisite uh, art, this exquisite art which reflects exquisite human understanding and fine human beings, this art is seen declining over the centuries. So, uh, so the wonderful art that you see in uh, Kangra in the late uh, medieval period is remarkable for carrying on this uh, beautiful uh, tradition in the midst of the beautiful hills. Yes. Uh, by this by this period, uh, some names of artists have come to be known. Thank you. Rajendra Kimesra, congratulations from Thailand. Joined despite eye surgery this morning. Oh, I hope that uh, it has gone well and I hope it was a uh, minor surgery and that you are doing well. All my best wishes to you and thank you so much for joining us. What type of paints were used? Uh, these would be um, mainly mineral colors, which were still in use uh, at this, uh, as I said, uh, for Indian art, this is a later period, but uh, the miniatures are still using uh, natural uh, vegetable dyes and uh, mineral colors. Thank you. Yes, and when this film was made, did you ever think of its timelessness, Vinoyji? Which year was it, sir? Uh, this series of 26 films on uh, the paintings of India was uh, shot uh, across eight months in uh, the time of uh, 2001. And uh, it should really have taken us a few years to shoot it, but because of the telecast schedules of the of Durdarshan, we had absolutely no choice. So we hardly slept at all. We uh, slept in 200 different places uh, in the 240 days of uh, travel. And uh, yes, uh, uh, the spirit in which I did this work was a spirit of the recognition of the fact that uh, many, many ancient Indian paintings were in dark recesses in caves and temples in, 
India and that uh, the paintings were also spread, the miniature paintings were spread across, uh, across so many museums around the world. So this was uh, made in the spirit of archiving and, re and uh, revealing Indian art. So it was really made uh, uh, to do this. And therefore, uh, I hope that uh, it's, uh, it will be timeless in as much as uh, it will provide a repository of uh, Indian art the way that, uh, uh, quite frankly, nothing else does. There, is, uh, there, are no, there are no books, there are uh, no other repositories where, uh, uh, like these 26 films, the entire range of Indian art is covered. And also it is covered from so many places across India and around the world. And uh, the selected masterpieces are depicted. So therefore, yes, that is the spirit in which this work was done which is why we made such an immense effort for uh, 240 days. And the crew uh, woke up on an average at about uh, 3.30, 4 uh, every morning. On an average, we drove uh, about 250 kilometers every day to go to the various places. The entire travel was charted out. It was done as a labor of love. And I had a wonderful crew that uh, supported me and best of all, enjoyed the experience very much. So yes, I hope that these paintings will always serve uh, uh, a long-term purpose. Thank you. Shikha, highly inspired. Can't wait to work with you, sir. Ah, yes, Shikha. Welcome to the team. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you join us and uh, indeed, the art of uh, the art of India is a uh, is a wonderful uh, area in which to work and and as, as I told you, the whole purpose is to lose oneself in the work, to regard work as one's dharma, and well, welcome aboard. Thank you, Lalita de Souza. Thank you, Benoit. Another question for you, more personal. Have you experienced through your art? a kind of a spiritual grace or bhakti? Lalita, for me, uh, the experiences began with my, uh, with my joy of the discovery of uh, Ajanta. And uh, Ajanta taught me a great deal. Ajanta taught me about grace. Ajanta taught me that all that there is in the world which matters is compassion beyond all the, all the worldly desires, just like we have always been taught, but somehow being taught is not enough. There is a manner in which art reaches out to us and tells us in a way that is very convincing, tells us in a way which is shared, mm -hmm. the artist shares an experience with us, which is uh, much more than uh, uh, words read in a book. So the grace of all that there is the compassion which should be, which is all that there is, frankly, beyond, beyond all the harshness of uh, material uh, greed in the world, etc. So, yes, the art is supposed to teach us the true meaning of life. The art is supposed to lift the veils of illusion and show us the grace which there is. And I will have to admit that Ajanta is where it all began and uh, taught me. It, Ajanta gave me peace. Ajanta gave me solace. It convinced me deep inside uh, that uh, all that I had been uh, taught about uh, compassion and kindness and the virtues of life were actually absolutely true. Thank you. Are these paintings made today or is the art lost? A human being can only make uh, himself. So if a human being is confused, if a human being is violent, if a human being is greedy, his work will show you exactly that. Greed, uh, violence, restlessness, 
and happiness. And if a human being is at peace with himself, if the human being has, a, has an idea of uh, the sublime, if the human being has a recollection of uh, the grace which is inherent deep within himself and in all that there is, then the art will contain that grace. And modern times are certainly not times in, in which we are at peace. Modern times are, uh, uh, it's, the world, is, uh, the world is, is much more frenzied. The world is much more frustrated. The world is much more violent. And therefore, art can only reflect that. So today's art cannot reflect uh, this peace, cannot bring us the peace which this uh, early art can bring us which is, of course, the marvelous value of this art. We can always run away to it and uh, find that solace for our own souls. We can share the experience of the artist and we can, uh, uh, we can find the sweetness, the beauty, just like if you hear the little birds, maybe early in the morning, wherever that you are, there may be the call of little birds. That can also give you the same sense of peace. But uh, yes, the art of today can only reflect uh, what we are as human beings. Therefore, this kind of exquisite peace is not easy to find in today's art. Thank you. Mita, if Benoit has time, maybe he will tell us about how he felt in the caves of Ajanta and Inora when working there. He shared something with me about it. Uh, as I was, uh, as I was just saying, also, uh, I was transported. I was uh, completely. Uh, I had a marvelous experience uh, of uh, the many weeks that I spent uh, lost in the work, and uh, perhaps the experience which. Uh, uh, Mita remembers my sharing may have been that uh, when I started the work at Ajanta, it was at uh, Cave 26, where the earliest uh, rays of light uh, reach in the morning. And uh, I was photographing the deep interior of the cave, the shrine of the Buddha, with a perspective control lens, which of course takes uh, uh, a little effort and a little uh, doing to adjust the lens, etc., and to do that. And uh, as, uh, as I was doing that, as is my habit, I just uh, folded my hands before uh, taking the picture. Later, uh, a gentleman called Chintamani, who was the head of uh, the security watchman, of Ajanta at that time. He was, nobody knew his age because he had been working at Ajanta since he was a child under the government of the Nizam of Hyderabad. And uh, so he had been there forever. And uh, he had the attitude of a man who had been there forever. And he was a very brusque person and a person who was uh, uh, very downright in what he said and did. And so he told me, ask enough terms that I've been here for a long time. And I can tell you that this work is going to be special. Well, it was certainly very special in uh, teaching me a great deal about, uh, about the meaning of life, about the meaning of art, and giving me the opportunity to travel around the world to share this meaning of life with people everywhere. And I must say that uh, uh, Ajanta was received uh, everywhere in the world as perhaps the finest art of human time. So it, was, it became a very meaningful journey. And of course, as I've said in this film also, the paintings of Kangra, the miniature paintings of Kangra are rare paintings which take us back to this world as you find it, Ajanta. Thank you. Minakshi Malhotra, 
the fact of the artist being named is a significant feature of Western art. What about Indian art? Would you care to say something on it? Yes. In fact, uh, what I admire most of all about the Indian tradition is that the names are considered unimportant. In fact, uh, even the uh, kings of ancient India, for instance, uh, in the inscriptions of the third century BCE, even the kings in their inscriptions do not mention their names. Uh, we as we are considered to be ephemeral personalities that just come for a few days upon this uh, in this world and then go away. And we are not really considered important. What is important is the eternal ideas. What is important is the eternal grace. And therefore the search is constantly to lose the personality, to lose the sense of the self, to be able to gain something which is far more important. And therefore, in the ancient Indian tradition, there were not even portraits which were made. So the artists were very capable of uh, producing uh, portraits. And in the similar fashion, uh, names of artists were not written because it was the artist fulfilling his dharma. It was not to propagate his name. And that is where the quality of the uh, art springs from. Whenever there's a reason for the art, whether it is a commercial reason of sale, whether it is a reason of propagating one's own name, we've already lost something. You've lost the purity of it. You've lost the divine grace of it. And uh, there, is a, there is a quality in the art itself when it is uh, created without uh, these uh, materialistic uh, notions. And therefore, I think it's been a wonderful tradition in ancient India, where the name was entirely unimportant. Like I said, even the kings would not mention their name in their own inscriptions. And as you would be aware, even, uh, even uh, the only buildings which were made out of lasting material were those which were to the divine, uh, temples and caves uh, to the divine. Even uh, the houses of uh, kings uh, were not made out of stone. They were made out of ephemeral material. So the personality was truly unimportant, including the personality of the painter. It was his grace which was important. Thank you. Dipankar Mukhopadhyay, is there any way to get a copy of transcript of this question answer session? lot of information and discussion has so much depth. Uh, thank you for enjoying this. And uh, uh, this will be put up on uh, YouTube. And the channel is called uh, Binoy Bell. And this will uh, probably in about a week from now, this will be up on YouTube. Thank you. Philippe Antoine Martinez. Thanks for the inspirational words and for sharing your sweet memories with us, Benoy. These Kangra paintings resonate deeply with me. Philip, I'm so glad that you have enjoyed this. And uh, truly, these artists reach deep within our hearts. They reach deep within our souls. They, they share with us the beauty which is actually inside us. That is the, the that is a joy of it. They revive the beauty which is inside us. Thank you so much, and uh, I think uh, it's been uh, yeah. a long session. Yes, Sujata, please tell uh, when is the next screening. We'd love to have you for our next screening, which would be on the eleventh of March. It's a Saturday, and at six pm as always. And this time we are traveling further north and the film is called Ancient Legacy of Kashmir. So please mark it in your calendars and we look forward so much to having you with us once again. Thank you all very much. It was a joy to be with you.